State tree is an exciting new tool in UE5 that function as a general purpose hierarchical state machine. They give devs the ability to create highly performant logic that stays flexible and organized by combining selectors from behavior trees with states and transitions from state machines. Now I love these things and I've been using them a lot in my small projects, but I've been vocal about some of the issues in previous videos like the lack of debugging features and their general bugginess. So when I saw UE 5.4 added a state tree debugger, I had to check it out and y'all, I'm very happy with this update. There's a lot here that's beneficial for those making large and small projects. Epic has even implemented this tool with online multiplayer games in mind too. But today I'm gonna keep it simple and just highlight a few features I see myself using a lot. By the way, I think the best way to learn these features is to play with them yourself. So I've included project files for a state tree project, which you're seeing now in the description. Uh, feel free to download that. I've intentionally left a bug in there. So you can try and debug that if you choose. Check it out learn by experimentation. So what does the debugger do? The debugger monitors and records state tree runtime behavior. It's built with the goals of providing visual representation of an active state tree and giving live monitoring of runtime values for states, tasks, and conditions. This basically means while your game is running, you can now see visually what states you're in and current values for variables within those states. But with the background information out of the way, let's just dive into the features I like. I'm gonna start simple and I'm gonna save the best for last. Uh, this first one is breakpoints and they're bittersweet. Um, figuring out which state or task I'm currently in can be annoying at times, so I like the addition, but these breakpoints are temporary and will be lost if the asset gets reloaded. Now in 5.2, state trees were very buggy and would crash my engine frequently. I can already see the scenario where I set up a couple of breakpoints, run the game, the engine crashes, and I have to do it over and over and over again. But hopefully 5.4 has improved the stability of state trees. The good news is they're simple to add and there's some versatility to when these breakpoints break. All you gotta do is select a state, right click, and hit break on enter or break on exit. Shortcuts are F9 or Shift F9. I also like that you can disable states and tasks. All you gotta do is right click and scroll down to state enabled, click it, and it shows up as grayed out. Now, this is great for isolating and verifying functionality. Sometimes it's hard to see issues when the game is running as a whole, but isolating specific states can help out a lot. And last but not least, the debugger tab. Now in a nutshell, it provides runtime information and gives variable data when paused but the way that it actually works, I think is much more impressive and it's easier to just show you how it works. So to enable the state tree debugger, you wanna hit this window menu and select debugger and that'll pull up this debugger tab. It might pop up as its own window. That's okay, you can just grab the tab and drop it wherever you want in your editor. So let's actually go over this uh, panel that we have here. You'll see the name of the state tree in the top right corner. These play and stop buttons are the editor simulation. These control uh, the simulation in the viewport. So you could just hit the play button and it would do the same thing as hitting this green play button over here or hit the pause and stop buttons um, to pause the simulation. This next button right here is my favorite button. This is the trace session recorder. It allows you to record a live session and then play it back later to review using the analysis controls, which allow you to step through um, one frame at a time, step back a frame at a time, or uh, jump to a previous or next state changed frames, right? The reason why I like it is because sometimes I don't know what the heck is going on <laughs> or why stuff isn't working the way that I think it should be working. And I'd have to run like a simulation 10 times just to figure out that I didn't connect a node pin somewhere. Uh, this will just save me a lot of time in doing that. It's a great way to debug, in my opinion. Now this left panel over here is our trace and execution. So as we hit play, it'll um, generate a new trace execution with an associated timeline. This middle panel right here is the timeline panel. It shows executions in their active states. And if you select a state in the timeline over in this details panel, it'll give you information about specific states. Um, the details panel also includes execution details, information about task evaluators and transitions and data and logic within the state tree. So I think the best way is to just see it in action. So I'm just gonna hit this play button right here 
as you can see our trace execution has generated it in the timeline you can see the state tree going through each task as it is in in real time now if i were to hit the pause button we could take the timeline playhead and drag it back through and see the values of variables within the states that are active at the end of the state you can actually see which transition got triggered and which state we went to next by looking at the details panel now i'm going to stop and i'm going to hit play again and you can actually stack up executions and compare uh, different runs to make sure everything is functioning properly this time i'm gonna initiate this chase sequence that i've set up here it doesn't quite work properly but i think you get the picture and then if we stop the execution Again, I can just drag back through and see what values were when we went into the chase state and see how those values changed in real time. So I think this is just a really great way to debug. I, I love this. So round of applause for the devs at Epic. I think this is a wonderful update and state trees continue to be a promising tool in my opinion. Um, and just a little tip for game developers and software engineers out there learn to use your debugger tool in whatever editor you're using this is a lesson i learned far too late in my career they save a lot of time in tracking down failures and it's a great way to walk through code and really understand what's happening they're even handy if you have source code but you need to reverse engineer something out of it yeah just use your debuggers peace y'all